Hi True Crime fans, it's me Patty Lee, still no air conditioning, still week 23. Um, I've got, as you can see, a bunch of um, big case court updates for you um, in this little section. Um, we're drinking, we're pairing everything today with the Smirnoff Ice. I'm going to have to crack open a new one. The Red, White, and Berry Limited Edition. They come out with them every summer around 4th of July. Um, it's sweet. It's cool. It's not too alcoholic because I found in the heat I was getting ill. Um, and this episode, besides brought to you by Smirnoff Ice, is also brought to you by my neighbors, neighbors, God, am I saying that right? Uh, even though it's not very alcoholic, I've had two and a half. Um, my neighbors, Heather and John, who have provided us with emergency um, loan of air units. So I'm able to tape and not feel ill. So that was good. Um, so our big court cases. We start with Bear Bear. Bear Bear Morphew. Um, so it's good to be, it's good to be white. And male in Colorado it certainly is so Barry has somehow I don't know when you vote in somebody else's name I you know talk to the black female from Texas you get in big fat trouble when you don't vote right <laughs> in some states if you're maybe a minority in, in dual respects but apparently in Colorado oops Sorry, sorry, my missing wife. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that I wasn't responsible for her vote. I guess you missed civics class from every grade. Like, what is it? Fourth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, um, and twelfth grade. And then in college, you have to take the government class. Did you miss all of those, Barry? Were you out hunting, Barry, instead of going to school? Because I know that I get to vote one time. Me. Just me. I don't get to vote, especially for someone who's missing. Are you shitting me, Barry? You're full of bullshit. And your looks are going, by the way. You look like hell. That's just my opinion. Just my speculation. You know, the telltale heart under... Yeah, read The Telltale Heart by um, Edgar Allan Poe, Bear Bear. I'm sure. Seems like you might be experiencing those symptoms. And Bear Bear doesn't have any place to live. Oh, he's got it rough since people don't like him because he was, you know, uh, accused of some, you know, hurting his missing wife. And, oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, Bear Bear. So you don't have a permanent residence, although you were renting two homes in Salida, weren't you? You were staying in the one, what happened to your girlfriend? The one that looked like your ex-wife? You know, the one that you got right away after she disappeared? You had her by July the next summer? No? Shanta, I believe? Where's Shanta? Why aren't you living there? What about the house you rented in Monarch Park? What's going on, Bear Bear? Okay, so you your permanent address is Iris Eaton, or Eaton's, sorry, Iris. I, actually, Iris, if I had a problem in Colorado, I'd want you as my defense attorney because you go to the mattresses. I, I, I give you that. You've got passion, um, you know, misplaced as I feel it might be. Um, anyway, so Bear Bear doesn't have a permanent address. I think it's still... I, I'm not sure how the court is going to do probation when they don't know where Bear Bear is living. Um, but, yeah, they made a deal. So he has pled to a fifth degree felony of voting and, you know, voting in someone else's name. He did it in such a way that he's claiming that um, this is like all his other excuses. Sorry, Bear Bear, but you, I, I don't believe you about your wife, and I don't believe you about this. It's kind of lame. Oh, you signed for her, voted for her, and uh, you were her witness, but you didn't sign her name. So, technically, you didn't really forge it, sort of. Oops. I guess that gives us some space for um, believability on your part. Whatever. Um, and don't worry, though, 
folks, it's a fifth degree felony, so he shouldn't have access to guns, um, and he can't vote, so he won't be voting in the midterms, thank God. Um, but hey, you better watch for a ballot coming from somebody else, because, you know, he might be tempted. Just my speculation, in my opinion. I'm just saying he's got a history. Um, Bear Bear, yeah, he, he wants to hunt, though. And the judge, Judge Boyce, very nicely was like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, people like to hunt. So he said he could bow hunt or muzzle hunt. I mean, Bear Bear's got lots of exceptions to the rules, doesn't he? I mean, one would think, so his felony is a deferred felony. He, like, pled guilty, but it's deferred, meaning, and then if he does probation and doesn't get in any trouble, which I'm not sure how we're going to tell if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing because he doesn't have a permanent address, but as long as he checks in, I guess as long as he gets himself to his probation officer, um, yeah, he will have that felony wiped off his record. Um, otherwise, it'd be like three years in jail. White men problems. I mean, I am sorry. Everybody can say that's not a big deal, but everybody else in the U.S. goes to jail for that shit. Seriously. For years. For not voting right. For trying to vote twice. Or voting in the wrong name. Or the wrong place. But not Bear Bear. Oh no, and by the way... Well, he can have at least a, a muzzle gun and a bow if he if he's just got to alert his probation officer. Why the hell should he get to? I mean, why? 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 I don't understand. It seems it seems unfair to all of the rest of us why Barry can do whatever the heck he wants, and then he won't have anything on his record. So if the gods. Are, are fair at all. I'm, I'm pretty much hoping that um, we will have some uh, that he'll F up his probation. He, I mean, it's just unbelievable. I don't know if it's just, I don't know. It, he, whatever. And we still don't know where Suzanne is. Her body still hasn't been found. Lauren Scharf did a update with um, her friend who she always talked about what was going on in the Barry Morphew trial who is now moving and living in Missouri. And so Lauren um, did a life update with her and then updated us about Barry. Lauren Scharf, great, um, recommend her highly. But she mentioned, you know, they have no idea how often people are going out there and looking for Suzanne. They said they had an idea of where she might be. Are they looking for her? I don't know. Let's find, Su hashtag find Suzanne, right? Nobody else seems to care about us online. I mean, seems like everybody else has just moved right on. It's, it's, it's except for her family in, in Indiana. Sorry. I don't want the Mormon family, Andy and her sister. I mean, I, I don't want to. Um, they do care. But I just mean, Barry and the daughters seem to have just gone on with their lives. Unbelievable. She raised those children. I just unbelievable. All right. Um, we have a quick update in a big court case on the laundry petito side. Um, last we had spoken, we had the laundries had submitted a brief, um, responding to the judge's order that the case would go forward. And, um, each of the laundries had said like, we don't, we don't agree with this because of this. We don't agree with, like, there were eight points. Well, the Petitos came back, and they had it short and sweet because I like the Petito lawyers. Um, they don't mess around. They speak through their filings, and they speak concisely, and they basically just said, all that, every point that you made that what no, negatory, Ghost Rider, negatory. All right, so... Um, sorry. Am I, um, I, I have, I, I, I still, I talk a lot about duty of care now because I looked up that law. If you invite somebody into your house, you have a duty of care. Like if they're working in your house even. It's a higher duty of care than if, if they're just, um, well. You have a higher duty of care if you invite somebody into your home. 
even to work. But they invited Gabby Petito into their home to live as a family member. And when she didn't return, they had a duty of care to tell the police, to tell her family. That is the duty of care. And I've told my almost all adult children now, you tell me where you're going to be. I mean, I'm not going to, I have no ability to say you can't be outside of this house. You can't go someplace for the night. But what I want to know is, will you be at home or not? Are you alive? Where are you? I'd like to know those three things, but especially the first two. Like, you're not going to be at home? Tell me that you're not going to be at home and, and check in with me so I know that's, because that's part of my duty of care toward you. Because if you're not, heard from in 24 hours, I'm going to report you. Be assured. Um, so, duty of care. It's an important concept. Laundries should learn it. Okay, um, and uh, we have the Murdoch case. So, Alec Murdoch showed up in court. Um, Alec was shaven, clean shaven, like bald, and skinny. He does not look great. I mean, he looks younger only because he has no hair. I mean, his face isn't lined or anything, but he's skinny. It looks like the stress is showing on him. Um, Dick Harpultrian, Harpulian and the state's attorney, um, this was the initial pleading. And um, I think I might have spoken a little bit on my live about this, but again, I was so hot and it was in the middle of the night. And I don't know if I was cogent and explained this. But anyways, Alec pleaded not guilty. Again, no big surprise um, to the murders. Uh, and he, I don't know if everybody in South Carolina said this or if it was him personally, but he pled um, not guilty and by God in my country, which was kind of interesting. Lori Hellas on the um, uh, Hidden True Crime also brought this up. Um, so... At this point, um, everybody's worked up about a gag order. So, this kind of has something in common with the Vallow Daybell case. Hold on. Okay. It's not a true, complete gag order. It's not, um, like... What I consider a complete gag order is that, like, media will not be in the court. Everything will be sealed. No talking to the press. This this is just a no talking to the press. Nothing um, extrajudicial is to get out. Now, we know that we all had a big heads up that SLED was going to arrest Alec Murdoch for the murders. And, and that was reported by the press. And even Fitz News has said, like, they have a vested interest in keeping their sources and getting that information, so they're upset by this. And I understand that, but if we are going to get convictions that are um, the best convictions that are representative of the facts and that we can all believe in, then we need less bias. And in America, in some cases, there is way too much attention for there to be slips of the tongue by either side, especially from the prosecution to the press, but by either side. We need everybody to shut the hell up, right? Speak in court. But the judge, Judge Newman, did emphasize, look, I want this to be as transparent as possible, regardless of the international interest in this case which I appreciated. And he said, so I'm not going to, you know, we're not sealing everything. We're not keeping the media out of the court. Good. I like it. Um, and we know enough about this case now. We, I mean, I mean, we, I don't think we need to hear from either side. And I know though that real media, investigative media sources, that is a hindrance to them. And I, it, you know, and everybody loves Mandy Matney, who works with Fitz News. She's also has a podcast, The Murdaugh Murders. If you haven't watched it or listened to it, not only listen to it, but re-listen to it. Because there is so much going on. I'm going to have to create my own little crazy wall. And I'm going to use Mandy Matney's 
podcast to do it because she is one of the only people who really does consider every source. And by the way, if you're a person making fun of her tone of voice, one of my daughters speaks exactly like that with a sort of a gravelly voice, a little vocal fry. I love it. I also love that she's been in South CAC enough that she's got like that little lilt to her voice. Could we please not um, be cruel to people's tone of voice? I mean, I'm sure my subscribers are, it, you are, I am sure if you're listening to me and you're truly subscribed and listening each week that you've got to be a somewhat nice kind of person. Um, and I doubt that you're that person making fun of Matney, um, Mandy Matney's voice. Hello, dyslexic detective again. But just if you're, if you're thinking of like, just don't. She's doing all of us a huge favor by documenting this and she has been documenting it from the beginning. She actually was investigating the Murdaws before. So it is a gold mine. I must tell you. Okay, so Alec Murdaugh pled no guilty. We're not surprised. We won't hear any more from Dick Carpoolian, which come on, let's say we're not really sad about that. Um, he's just going to tell us how Alex isn't guilty. And we're not going to hear from the prosecutors or nobody else should be talking. And that was kind of, Dick Harpoolian made a little jab. It's interesting to see how the Southern gentlemen work together when they were making little jabs. It really is a little bit different than other court systems and a bit appreciated by this Yankee. Um, what will happen next is the two sides, they actually, it's nice to see people be civil to one another on either side. They agreed that the prosecution, the state, and the defense will show each other what they're going to file with the court, um, like 48 bit hours, business hours ahead of time. And so they don't, and then maybe seal it if they need to still and show the judge and then he'll unseal it and just when everything's checked out. And it, it, that is fair to keep the jury pool as much as possible. Um, although I think this might also, I don't know how, Carleton County, I mean, it's not huge. I think everything's going to end up in um, Columbia, the murders especially, because that gives you a huge, uh, more diverse pool of people and a more likelihood that people aren't so, I don't know, man, the Murdochs. They're everywhere, so it's going to be hard. But right now it's in Carleton County. Um, and Scott Reich on the um, on Crime Talk always hates that the Daybell case, like, why are they always sealing everything? Why are they sealing everything? And I think that Judge Boyce has, um, or is it Patrick Murphy? Well, I'm getting confused between the Colorado and the Utah case. But the judge in the... Daybell case, I think he decided long ago, similar to what's happening with the Murdoch case, when you have this huge publicity that we're just going to seal everything and then we'll unseal it once like we get things judged and talked about, but that the publicity is so huge that you're ruining the jury pool, even in a city like Boise, which is where the Daybell case will take place. So while we want to hear everything, we also want a fair jury and we want a good conviction. I think Lori Hollis would agree with me on that, um, as would any good attorney, right? You don't, you don't want to screw up the case before you get to a jury by having, uh, you know, having appeals made all, all kinds of bias. So, you know, in Canada, they're not even allowed to talk about anything about a crime once it's like once somebody's arrested that they you don't hear anything until it's all over they're not allowed to talk about it and I don't know if that's maybe not I mean it would wreck my channel and um but I'm really a teacher and an educational psychologist so um maybe I should get back to that instead of this so but you know we want to know because we're nosy and it's interesting and fascinating but um again these are real serious cases and we want the guilty parties to be cleanly convicted and for the system to work and to do it once and not have a bunch of appeals. So, um, our um, last big case review we have is the Oren and Orson Wells case. Trezell West 
um, lawyers has um, it was supposed to start against Trizel and Jacqueline today it has um, been put off they've asked to have it in October 24th so our fall slash winter is going to be very busy because now Murdoch's case is going to be going to trial between October and January we have the Daybell case going January 9th um, and now we're going to have the Orson and uh, well Trizel and Jacqueline are going on trial for Orson and Orrin West's uh, demise um, October 24th it looks like so we're gonna have a busy fall and winter a lot of these main cases are coming up it should be very interesting all right um and that's it for my big court update I had just some final thoughts next <laughs>